Hi everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and today I was lucky enough to talk to Michael Shade, who is one of the, he's the CEO, basically, of Rockfish Games, and they are the ones that are on Kickstarter right now. They are creating Everspace, which is a different style of space game than the other games I think that we're accustomed to seeing, like Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous. These are the guys who made Galaxy on Fire. They're trying to use what they learned from Galaxy on Fire and basically make a space game that's different than other space games. I started looking at the Kickstarter and I decided, you know what, this is definitely something that I would be interested in, and I've had a boatload of subscribers asking me to talk to these guys. And so I went ahead and was lucky enough to get through to him, especially for a smaller channel like ours, and he was nice enough to jump in to a very long discussion where we talked about everything about his game, including you know the music, the genesis of the original story, how they're handling the DLC. We cover a lot of different aspects, and I really just want to thank Michael for jumping in and doing this, especially, again, for a smaller channel. Everybody, this is Carrick with ACG, and I'm with Michael. Uh, Michael, how do you pronounce your last name? Shade. Shade. I like it. Yes. Um, <laughs> from Rockfish Games, they're working on Everspace, and uh, a lot of subscribers have been really interested in this. So I asked him, and he was nice enough at 8 p.m. his time, even though it's sunny outside. No he, worries. Uh, he asked, or he was okay to go ahead and answer some of the questions that we had. And some of these questions, just so you know, Michael, are subscriber questions and, and uh, things that people have asked. So I'll just jump straight into it. Um, the first, the, especially in my channel, we cover a lot of game design. We don't, you know, when I review a game, a lot of times I'll, I'll give some history on the game. And what I wanted to know about this game in particular is... Like, what's the genesis of the story? Were you guys sitting around? I mean, and I mean the very first moment. Like, were you sitting at a table and you were you were thinking, I just want to do this? Or <laughs> were you, you were you guys out for a drink? You know, I love to hear those genesis stories. Yeah, yeah. Well, in fact, in the beginning, we hadn't had any story at all in the game. So the team was pitching a roguelike space shooter with a quality that we can achieve, and uh, and that's it. Mm. And um, to be frank, I was I was at least on uh, on the fence on this because I was uh, really dying quite a lot. Um, I don't know <laughs> if I would like that personally. And then I also was concerned about our fan base, the Galaxy and Fire players, because we had a lot of story. You had a, you even had save slots. We had yeah. an um, auto auto save, and I'm like, well, I'm not sure if this is going to work. And uh, so I was really, I was very, very skeptic. That changed until I played Shadow of Mordor, and oh. um, I have to say, I suck. <laughs> and I, I, I it's seriously, okay. I I died a lot. I was org fodder, and. Um, but then, then I realized every time I die, I get some XP and I can go back, upgrade my skills, and the next time I, I just kill the orc, right? And uh, I like also. And then I got ah, oh, this is how roguelike works, um, and um, but roguelike in a way that you keep something. And then the way they presented the story, it's like that that felt okay or it felt right, and um, you progressed in within the in the levels, and then there were story bits. But then I had the feeling. Well, I also could just don't care about that story, just leave it alone. So we thought, well, if we kind of try to adapt that and really focus on roguelike, combining that with a story, we need to find a story that, that makes sense that you die a lot and you come back. Mm -hmm. So and obviously, I don't want to spoil of course. what you are, who you are, because our idea is we just throw you in there and you don't know who you are and mm -hmm. um, what, what is this all about. You only have a destination where you have to go to. So we came up with a story that makes sense. And, uh, and then we said, this story needs to be told in a nonlinear way because in a roguelike, we don't know when and where you are within the right. gaming world. And, and then we said, so that's actually, that's not, a, that's not a disadvantage. It's an opportunity. Sure. So if we, if we come up with a story that can be told in different ways, then everybody, every player will have a different experience. And we think this is something super cool. And then we came up, okay, when and where will we reveal bits of the story and then we said well if, if dying is kind of a inevitable um, event let's put it this way um, then this is a moment where we can say well we reward you that you get bits of the story so that's how we came up so every time you die gotcha. in combination with a certain progression you get bits and pieces of the story but at the same time if you kill a boss for instance you also get bits and pieces of the story 
Oh, I see. Okay. Well, that, uh, that'll that feed into a question I'll ask a little later about this. <laughs> okay. That's great. Uh, One of your bullet points says no sim. It's talking about action and it says first person and third person action. No sim. But there right. isn't... Uh, it, it's, it's funny because it's just sort of there and then you continue reading the Kickstarter. But for some reason that caught my eye that you guys thought it was important enough to to say no sim. Uh, yes. e what what exactly did you mean by that? Uh, er, you know, or and if you don't want to spoil it now, I understand. But I, I just saw that and it seemed such a unique little blurb to put in. Yeah. <clears throat> um, no, we, we take this really serious uh, about having Everspace as an action title. So we won't have Newton physics um, because we say, first of all, there are great titles out there that do Newton physics. And for those people who love that, fine, that's gotcha. already covered. Um, since we come from the mobile background, we had to make Galaxy Fire super accessible, very intuitive controls. You're right in the action. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to build on that. So we said, no, we want to have a PC space shooter that's easy as Galaxy Fire was to pick up. Within minutes, you're within the action. So you can have a game session that lasts only 10 minutes and you're satisfied. Let's say you're about to go out, your friends are coming in 30 minutes and say, ah, well, I, I put my PC on and I just play for 10 minutes and this is very satisfying and then I just leave it there. I wouldn't play a triple A title for just 10 minutes. So if I have less than an hour time, I wouldn't fire up my console or my PC to play right, a triple A title. Right. So we wanted to make sure that this these shorter time frames make sense for you to play Everspace. And... Um, we're also not a sim in regards of how we present um, space because usually space is like it's 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 endless uh, and empty. Prob prob <laughs> yeah, probably and empty. Yes, yeah. um, but we wanted to have a space in a you could say almost in a fantasy way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, not orcs and, and, and elves and stuff, but more. It's very colorful. It's pretty. There's a lot of things that are there, and obviously there are a lot of things that are physically not correct. I mean, we have sound in space. We we know there is no right. sound. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, we think it just adds to the experience. And if we can distinguish ourselves from the big sims there, then there is room for everybody. And, yeah, um, yeah that's definitely. I, I think that that's uh, probably what got a lot of people excited about. Uh, the Kickstarter is doing really well, I think. And, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll let you definitely discuss anything you want about that Kickstarter and how it's doing and how you feel it's doing. But one thing I did notice when looking at your game, it does. It, it differentiates itself from, from other titles. And uh, you're right. You know, you wouldn't get into a Star Citizen and play it for 10 minutes and you wouldn't get into uh, an elite dangerous and play it for 10 minutes. But if something like this can offer that kind of instant access, I think that that is a place that ha that no one is at right now and yeah. uh, could be incredibly interesting for gamers. I know that a lot of people are really excited about that. That's that's one of the things. So you hit that core audience really well. Um, you know, as I discussed uh, before we started recording, I am definitely the channel here. We review graphics, but we also review sound, music, voice and stuff. And so I have one soundtrack question, and I don't know if you can answer this yet. Uh, who's working on it, first of all? Uh, do you have a particular composer you guys have chosen? Um, that's Giro Görlich. He's our sound director okay. for six or seven years. He has been with us with the Galaxy and Fire series. He's awesome. Yeah, he is. Yes, yeah. He's, that music's he's, really good. He sits in his room and he plays the guitar, <laughs> the piano and everything, records all that. And every sound effect is handcrafted by Gero. Oh, nothing, okay. is, nothing is out of the box. He does yeah. everything by himself. And it's it's more like we come with um, our creative director, but also the rest of the team. We, we may have some sound ideas and we approach him and say, hey, Gero, we think this is cool. How, how do you like that? And then, and then we sit together, we discuss how the sound should be. And then, then he's working out something. Then he puts it um, uh, in, right in Unreal Engine, so you have that uh, right away. And then we check it out if it's cool or not. And also, also all the trailers you have seen, this is Gero. He's the man. He did okay, everything. Gotcha. We did everything in house. So um, yeah. So that's this, sort uh, of the music we heard in the trailer. Would you say that's uh, evocative then of what we should expect in the game? That sort yeah, of that's absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the direction. So, so the question um, a lot of gamers, especially when it comes to music, I, I recently reviewed a game um, that's a two D scroller that had uh, very interactive music. Uh, power ups ch changed the soundtrack slightly. You know stuff like that. And I think as gamers get more. 
uh, sophisticated when it comes to their musical tastes. Sometimes they desire that dynamic stuff. Is there anything, uh, have you guys decided if you're going to have dynamic music, for example, exploration's a little slower, and then as you, you know, meet enemies, that music starts to to pipe up, or is it more tracks that just play and, and, and yeah. adjust? Oh, we had that in Galaxy Fire already. So even on our mobile version, um, we had dynamic music. So you'll be doing if, all that. Yes, 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 of course. Okay. Even the, um, how to say, it, we have a battle music and um, the way the level of intensity uh, depends on what's going on in a battle. And of course, we will, um, how to say, build on that and have an even better experience in, in Everspace. I mean, it's, you know, it's if, if you come from mobile to the PC, all right. of a sudden you have all that memory and yeah. the GPU power and it's it's like, oh, let's put in some more polygons or so still runs at 60 frames or more textures, still doing 60 frames, more right. particles and everything. We're like, wow, this is, um, it's just, a, it's, it's a breeze. Um, That's so great. Because, yeah. And um, yeah, so you can expect that anything in terms of visual audio quality, uh, we, we're going to excel on that. And uh, Gero said, well, I, I want to work in Dolby 5.1. And we like, well, do you really think so many people have that? And said, yeah, but we can do it. So we should do it. It's, it's not yeah. that much more expensive. So yes, we will have Dolby 5.1 full surround sound. Yeah, aspects. you know, gamers are, I mean, they're a sophisticated lot. You know, when they start dropping yeah. 300 or 400 for a console, that's that's the minimum spec right now, you know, 300 yeah. or 400. And then a PC, of course, being more expensive. Most gamers these days are, are moving towards, you know, those those sophisticated sound systems. And uh, they, they really enjoy it. You know, 5.1, there are a lot of people who have 7.1. There's a lot of people who are going even past that. So... Uh, you know, anything people can do in the music sphere, I think, is rewarded. I think it's it's, it's a part, right now it's not talked about as much, but over time, I think we'll, we'll see more and more reviewers start talking about it, and, and that'll excite me. Um, so moving on to the ship, you guys had this yeah. really cool graphic where you showed the different parts. Mm -hmm. uh, um, wh what was your decision-making process around one ship with tons of uh, upgrades versus maybe multiple types of ships? No, there's a good explanation to that. In Galaxy and Fire, we had plus 40 ships or something like that. And we found out it were just four or five, four or five. people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. So we said, well, if we put so much effort and so much time and resources in creating those 40 uh, with all the DLCs we, we had, the add-ons, I think it was more than 50 ships. Um, I don't want to say it's, it was pointless, but it was a waste to mm -hmm. a certain degree. And... Um, then we learned, so instead of ha having multiple ships that are pretty similar to each other, we should rather have one ship or just a few and make sure there's a progression within the ship and you can upgrade it a lot and make this interesting. Because if you have only one ship that you upgrade a lot, it's also more meaningful to you as a player. Yeah. If you, if you can dump a ship every, I don't know, two hours or so, you get a new ship. What's the, the wealth for yourself for that right. ship? And Everspace is not like a racing game where you are crazy about Porsche and Mercedes or Chrysler or whatever. Any kind of brand and you're a collector and you're a fan of a particular brand, then you have to have a lot of cars in a racing game. That makes sense. But in a space game, it makes sense to have one ship or just a few that play very differently right. and, of and, and offer or provide a different game experience. And that's what we're up for. Yeah, no, that's that's actually excellent, and and thanks for uh, being sort of transparent on how you felt the DLC went for past titles, because uh, yeah. I, I think that that uh, a lot of times the moment anybody mentions something, then you might get uh, people, especially on the internet, who can not be so nice, being like, oh, that's just because they just don't want to make blah blah blah, you know, mm. and so knowing the behind the scenes decision making that helps a lot of people understand exactly what occurs, uh, you yeah, know, I sure. mean. Some people do want 50 ships, but they don't understand that, uh, you know, 1% uh, of people may use those where all those resources could be used on, you know, some other part of the game. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, it's you, you can't you can't uh, have 100 percent in everything. So that's that's excellent. Um, now, when it when it comes down to procedural generation uh, is it sounds like there is some in the game, at least a little bit. Uh, I was reading the Kickstarter and I was sort of trying to figure out where exactly, if there is procedural generation versus you guys hand handcrafting everything. Uh, is there procedural generation and how does it merge with handcrafted stuff if there is? 
Yeah, there's actually a lot of pre procedural generation. So every time you start from your carrier, that is something that we can um, unveil so far. You're starting at a carrier. Okay. Th then there's a certain there's a destination. This destination is always fixed. It's always the same. And then a, a plot. Uh, sorry, a, a course is plotted. And this this um, this course that's completely randomly uh, procedurally generated. Okay. And while you're following this um, this this course. You have um, at certain points you can decide I go to this uh, to one or another star system. So it's it's not fixed. You still have your choices. If you die, you uh, you start again from your carrier. Carrier. Then again, everything is randomly generated. We might throw in um, fixed systems here and there to help explaining uh, or progressing in the story. Mm -hmm. But the, the core element, the core loop, every time you die, you get a new, new world. galaxy or new universe. Yeah. Gotcha. Excellent. That, that's excellent. Um, what's the, what would you say, uh, I don't know how playable your build is, but what would you say the expected lifespan of a character is? And this gets to what you explained earlier, which is that regardless if you die or if you live, you'll be able to unlock the story, which actually mm -hmm. is one of my last questions, so we can skip that. But what, what <laughs> okay. do you think, like, what do you think the expected lifespan of a character is? Have you guys been tracking to see, okay, you know, a pretty good player lasts a certain amount of time before they, they take too much damage and die? Or is it yep. one of those things where you can stop that and a person could, I mean, can you win it without dying? Yes, of course, there needs to be a way to play that if you're really good and if you're you're lucky and like the way we roll the dice or the mm -hmm. dice had been rolled, um, you have a chance to do it in one run to the final destination. However, um, there are things you need to collect. Um, I have to think without, <laughs> to not spoil too much here. Well, you covered um, some of it on the Kickstarter, like you yeah, blueprints yeah, I know, I know. and stuff. So. Yeah, but I want to give you a little bit more, more than oh, the okay. Kickstarter. Otherwise, we don't need to do this here. So, <laughs> um, so you, you have to go to this destination. While you're, you're going there, you die. You, you meet other characters, mm -hmm. um, and you have to collect certain things. Okay. And and once we have completed this collection, this all will um, how to say lead to a major event. Mm -hmm. And to get to this major event, that this will take about twenty hours or so total gameplay time. Mm -hmm. Whereas a run can can could be, I'd say, average ten to twenty minutes. That mm -hmm. is something that we're aiming for. Um, but if the the odds are against you, you might be dead within five minutes mm -hmm. or so. Um, but if you're lucky, then you might be able to survive an hour. So gotcha. that's roughly what we have in mind. Uh, when you do, you have uh, inspirations for some of this, such as like Dark Souls. You know, obviously, yep. I'm sure you know about that. Uh, but also, it's funny when you talk about the resurrection. It reminded me of Battlestar Galactica, the TV show that came yeah, out a uh, couple years yeah, yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 me, yeah. myself as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that that resurrection that occurs there. I mean, that was the first TV show that felt like a roguelike TV show. <laughs> you know, oh yeah, you were, totally. I mean, yeah, when yeah, you yeah, think yeah. about it. Uh, so. Were, were your inspirations? I mean, obviously, I think you know Dark Souls is probably one of them. Did you and and other roguelikes that you looked at? Um, yeah. Was there any in particular that you saw and you were like, you know what, I sort of I really like something they're doing from here. Yeah. So the the team was playing Dark Souls a lot, and they 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 liked that very much. Um, uh, a reference would be um, Rogue Legacy. Um, so mm. big fan of that. And while we were discussing the story, Edge of Tomorrow came out. And oh, um, right. so, so right. while, while it's, it's, it's different because it's still a linear story. Mm -hmm. The only thing every time Tom Cruise has starts again, he gets a bit further than dies. And with yeah. the experience he has, he can dodge all the attacks and so on. And then he gets a bit further. We won't have that because every time you start again, everything else will be different as well. So it won't be like Edge of Tomorrow. But the way they they had Edge of Tomorrow with this um, re coming back, mm -hmm. we, we like that. That, that was perfect and just like just live another day i think that's their um, their subtitle or something it is yeah that is exactly what what we we said that made click with us and it was it was very motivating you were really so oh how do you get past that next point yeah, uh, right. um so to a certain degree that was inspiration for us as well in addition with you don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. and there will be situations and and people you meet and then you have it you can decide for instance, there's a pirate. You could kill that pirate. You could um, switch in your cloak and and, and uh, avoid the battle. 
you could try just to um, stun him with EMP and loot him and those all those kind of things. And this this will have a different outcome af uh, after you you made your decision for your for your gameplay or for your experience. And if there's a side character, for instance, offering you a side quest, mm -hmm. if you don't take that side quest, I mean, it's up to you. You pass. He's gone. You cannot go back and say, well, ah, there's this uh, NPC that always ha uh, holds that side quest. <laughs> so it's right. a meaningful decision. Yeah. Do you go for that side quest? Right. Yes. Then there's a chance to get some easy loot or what, whatever, or some easy reward. Or actually, you could also kill him. That's right. something that we have in mind. So why don't kill kill your quest, uh, the, the quest guy? Kill him. I but see. then he's gone. Then the I quest see. is gone. And, you know, so what we try to do or what we want to do is like that you're constantly, it's not only the combat that's challenging you, it's also the decisions that are out there. And um, it will have a different outcome depending on your decisions. And, um, yeah, we like that. Yeah, No, that's excellent. Uh, we talk about it uh, many times. There's various podcasts that talk about uh, gaming decisions. It's, it's becoming a big deal right now when you have mm -hmm. games like Skyrim that are really popular. But somebody will say... You, uh, I need you to save my daughter in four hours, and you return in seventy days, and they're still <laughs> asking you for four hours of your time and yep. things, uh, and and that connection. It seems like what you guys have said about you know connecting yourself to the ship, connecting yourself to decisions. It is all about you know making sure that things feel all focused together, connected, sort of a system in place. And and yeah, I really like that. I mean, it sounds great. The last question I have, and then um, I'm going to let you talk about your Kickstarter, whatever, uh, as, <laughs> right. as much as you want, is how do you, so you've sort of described a little bit about this, but how do mm -hmm. you envision, how, what would be your hope, you release uh, Everspace, what would be your hope about how people play it? Is it is it something where you hope that they're doing these 10 minute bits? Is it, uh, like, what is it, what would be your dream? You release Everspace, you go online, and you find people talking about it and you hear them talking about something. What would be that something you hope that they are talking about? Uh, good question. Um, obviously, I haven't made my mind about that. Um, <laughs> but let's get back to Galaxy Fire. We have people saying on a Java phone, right? On a, on a crappy Java phone right. like from 2005. <laughs> yeah. They played more than 100 hours. They actually killed that little joystick that's on the numpad. Said, I was so excited <laughs> flying in 3D space on my right. feature phone. And that's awesome. We want to have more of that. You know, and if, if you get that kind of feedback, that's why you do games. Yeah, man. of course. Uh, of course right. uh, we have people say, I spent more than 1,000 hours on Galaxy Fire and on the iOS version. So... Obviously, we, we did have some game analytics and tracking. We, we looked up and they said, people literally played 1,000 hours in Galaxy Fire. And we're like, what? I mean, obviously, we did some f things right. Otherwise, nobody would spend 1,000 hours. Right. Um, but it's not only the, the total amount of time that people spend in a game that makes, makes you feel great and is, is rewarding. Um, it's also, I, I would say, for Everspace, the, the biggest compliment that we could get from the communities like well yes you nailed it it is very entertaining it's full action is cool but it plays differently every time i play it and mm. it plays i have a different experience and i talk to my friends and they played it in a different way so if if that comes out then i would say mission accomplished i got gotcha. you gotcha. okay all right. Well, that's that's awesome. That's uh, uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to hear. It's, it sounds like you guys have a really good focus for it. And obviously, I think Galaxy on Fire has helped you guys sort of identify how you want to move forward on the PC. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess I will ask one last question. Unreal 4, is that the engine you guys are using? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, was that a choice instantly? Uh, did you look at any other engines? Um, we played around with Unity back at Fish Labs in the days, and um, obviously it's kind of unfair because probably Unity is a completely different point compared to where they were three years ago. Actually, we started with Unreal Engine 4 because we were working for a top-tier publisher on a console project last year with Unreal Engine 4. They brought it in, so we have like almost a year experience with Unreal 4, and man, it's it's a blast. So yeah, prior to that, that's it's, awesome. Yeah, we had our own tech. Which was great, and we had to do this on mobile because there was nothing around when we started 10 years ago doing 3D games on mobile. And um, But with Unreal, the guys, they do stuff within days that would have taken us weeks, if not months now. So the, the first build from, from the last year project, mm -hmm. there was after two weeks, we had something where you could fly around oh, yeah. and be like, what? <laughs> and um, yeah, and now with Everspace, we started early this year 
and you see the quality, yeah. right? And yeah. Right now we have about nine orbits that look gorgeous. Yeah. With a couple more uh, coming up, and um, so we will show more stuff uh, next week. And okay, uh, man, if if you if you could see what I saw today, yeah. um, no, it's 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 a fantastic technology, and I'm I'm not a coder myself, and I would say the blueprints. If if you understand how logic works and so on, even I could do stuff in Unreal. Right. And um, the team they 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 just love it. And of course, it's a big um, advantage if you know how to program shaders, mm -hmm. as we had to do that with our own tech. So now they say, ah, this is how it works. But it, it, you get your job done so much quicker with Unreal. It's it is Unreal. In our yeah. last developer uh, interview, I developed or I uh, interviewed Derek. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember his last name. I think it's Brown. He is working on a game for Microsoft called Ashen, and mm -hmm. they uh, they they showed it at E3 in the Microsoft briefing. And he, I asked him uh, what engine they were working on, and he said that Unreal 4 was the first time it felt like they added another person on the team just by switching engines. It was that good. Yeah, he, he basically I, said he they added it and it was within a incredibly small time that every single person on the team was like it feels like we have at least one other person now. It's that much faster. Yeah, I would I would I would, I would agree even further. It's like double your or triple your your team. That's if awesome. You, yes, that's absolutely. that's great. Congratulations, yeah. you guys got on that. So what I want to do is leave it up to you. Is there um, you know <laughs> is there anything on your Kickstarter uh, or anything in the last couple weeks since you've or last week or so since you put up the Kickstarter? Is there any new stuff? that uh, you're excited for. Um, and if you want to talk about other games in the industry, we do that as well. Derek and I have talked about a couple games on, on yeah. the uh, video cast. Is there anything exciting to you, uh, whether it's your own game or something you saw at Gamescom? You know? um, well, Gamescom, to be frank, I had back-to-back -back meetings. <laughs> you saw nothing. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, was, I was barely at the show floor. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, and Kickstarter. It's uh, we started Kickstarter four months ago, mm -hmm. and um, then of course we were preparing for Green Steam Line. That takes a lot of uh, effort to do that right. And I mean that was amazing. Fifteen thousand yes votes, eighty-six yeah. percent um, positive feedback. Uh, number two out of one thousand five hundred games. So that was uh, brilliant yeah. and yeah. and very yeah. rewarding to get that positive feedback. Congratulations on that too. Oh, thanks, thanks. And then obviously Kickstarter. I mean. Yes, we were positive because we had more than just a concept. We had more than a prototype. It was a pre-alpha. And um, we had a good feeling about our visuals. We were convinced the concept is right, the roguelike with the, with the high-end graphics. And then we came in the story. So we, th we thought we have a good package. But if you have like close to 1,000 comments <clears throat> that, that are so positive and now 60% after a little bit less than a week. Yeah, yeah. Man, I mean... Yeah, we were positive, but it, that was more than we expected, and mm -hmm. it, it humbles you. It's so great to get that feedback, and it's it's also it it gives you a very good feeling. You're doing the right thing, you know. If if you develop a game for one or two years, and you don't go out and you don't speak to the community, you don't know. Yeah, you're you in a vacuum. Know. Exactly, and uh, and now it's like we thought uh, this might be right, roguelike with the graphics and so on, and the production value that might be a good idea. And now it's like yes, it is a good idea. And now let's keep going forward and get more feedback from the community. And that's just fantastic. Yeah, I was looking so. at the uh, Kickstarter today and was really impressed. Um, just, uh, you know, there's there's Kickstarters. I mean, we can talk about Kickstarter for a moment. And then, of course, yep. I'll let you go because you're, you're <laughs> getting close to nine now. Um, but when it comes down to Kickstarter, you know, there's times where games... You, you know, they don't do so well. There was a game recently that uh, failed by two uh, Bioware X, uh, X employees. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we read um, about that. Yeah, yeah and, you know, it, it failed because I think, you know, regardless of what they might have internally, it just didn't show up on Kickstarter. I think the one thing on Kickstarter that you guys did, uh, and I've run a Kickstarter on my, on my own, so I know the difficulties of doing Kickstarters, and you guys had stuff. You know, I mean, you guys showed, you, you were like, this is what it is. Uh, you were very clear about what you were showing, and surprisingly enough, that is not done very yeah. often on Kickstarter. Um, did you need? Did you guys uh, elicit any help uh, or talk to other developers who've done Kickstarter? Or did yeah. you? Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean, still. I mean, we talked to Jan Jan Wagner from Cliffhanger Productions. He did Shadowrun online yeah. two right. years or three years ago, raised six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So. And um, so we listened to his uh, advice. We talked to Brian Fargo. Was 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 really nice that he got back to us. And, um, yeah. and nice uh, guy. He he went yeah, for sure. Totally, totally. And um, so we were like, 
well, we're not Brian Fargo. How are we, how are we going <laughs> to do this? Because, uh, right. well, uh, we're not that popular or known and such, such an industry veteran. And so we knew we had to show that the game is, well, of course, not almost there, but there is a lot of things that are mm-hmm. already visible, right? Mm-hmm. Um, currently, I think I saw Grip. Um, um, they just launched. It's a it's yes. a science fiction racing game that, mm-hmm. that looks crazy awesome. It's it also does. Unreal Four, so we know, we definitely can tell they they picked the right tech. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, we love that. It looks like car mayhem mm-hmm. and with crazy <laughs> jumps and everything. So that's my first short shout out today uh, to them. They reached out already. I'm just have so many emails, direct messages, Twitter, sure. Facebook tweets. So it was kind of hard to follow up with everything. Um, it looks it looks like solid concept. I, I bet it works. Um, it looks cool. So yeah. that is something um, we, we like to point out. And um, we looked at Umbra, for instance, the the French guys. Yes, I've played their demo. Yeah. I did a video yeah. on that. That looks tremendous. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. that Super. that looks graphically so far beyond almost mm-hmm. any of those other style of games. Uh, and it's got some gameplay chops. I, I played the alpha, and it, it's not bad. Okay. It's not bad. Okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, all those usual suspects, the super popular Bloodstain was a great campaign. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. I just, you know, if you if you measure yourself by those guys, it's just, it brings you down because it, that's it an exception to the rule, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, right. No, you guys have done really well. Um, I think uh, I just have to say congratulations because it, it is Thanks. it is funny. Uh, uh, like I said, the channel's not super large, but we do get some people talking about different games. And yeah. it the moment you guys announced it you were on i don't know if you go to neogaf if you if you follow forums but uh you know one of the largest video games the largest video game forum of all time i mean you guys had a thread within you know i mean it had to have been a couple minutes where yeah. somebody yeah somebody posted that and uh, i'll be posting this video there as well um, <laughs> thanks man yeah they you know you you've captured i think uh, a lot of people who probably followed you during your time on mobile but also yeah. you know what you yeah. showed um there's something you can tell in kickstarter sometimes that there is not as much behind the scenes as maybe the kickstarter presenters trying to pretend that mm-hmm. you know sometimes there's a presentation issue where you look at it and you're like I'm not 100% sure there's as much as they're ch- sort of pretending here. With your guys' yeah. stuff, I mean, y- you could tell. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> you guys, I think, are going to do really well. Uh, what, do you, I, what are your plans for DLC? I saw, I saw that you had mentioned some. And if you don't yeah. want to talk about it, that's fine. Oh, um, no, it's okay. That's but okay. as we were talking, I happened to notice that it did say DLC. What are you, what are you thinking for that? Uh, plenty of things. Well, obviously, DLCs could be more ships, player ships that just yeah. give you a different experience. Um, <clears throat> um, we want to. We're really crazy about a, a difficult, a very hardcore mode <laughs> right. um, that's really nasty, very unforgiving. Mm-hmm. So it's all for all the masochists out there, and <laughs> uh, with permadeath, and we don't. You don't. You lose everything. If you die, wow! You start from scratch. So yeah. um, that I won't is be something. I that version. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't handle uh, that. Yeah, probably me neither. But we have some guys here on the team. Uh, yeah, totally into that. Um, it goes all the way to uh, new orbits, obviously, new story bits. Um, maybe um, having different gameplays and sure. um, lots of ideas. Um, nothing set in stone. So. Well, that's but, awesome. We're man. not we, we're not there yet, so we need to get our yeah. funding goal first, um, and then see see how it goes. I know a lot of people asking us about multiplayer. Um, that is something very a bit hesitating because the core of the game, it's a, Everspace, is a single player game, yeah. and um, it's great to play with other with friends. I li- I like to play co-op a lot. Gears of War, I love it. Uh, yeah. Halo and so on, awesome. The thing that that bothers me is if you have a co-op session and then you don't have time to join the next time, mm-hmm. what do you do with that session? You can't right. complete that game anymore. It doesn't make sense that somebody else jumps in and we're like, hmm, we rather have a single-player game because we think there's a lack of single-player games these days. Yes, yeah. And multiplayer is also because the project we did last year, that was a multiplayer project. Um, so we know how much work that is to get this done right. I mean, we got this right, the code was stable, everything, the experience was great, but everything was at least twice, if not three times expensive, or more expensive, as if we have done it single player. So, and that's, sure. yeah, this is why we go single player. If stretch goal after stretch goal gets unlocked, yes, we do have great ideas for co-op multiplayer, but that's further down the road. 
I think, um, and just so you know, on the channel, uh, I have not got a single question or desire from you guys to put multiplayer in. So I'm sure that it's there, but I think most of most people who understand where you're coming from Mm -hmm. understand that you know the procedural generation and the way that story all comes together is the other player i mean at, yeah. in, in many yeah. ways you don't necessarily need another person interjecting themselves into your game and smashing into your ship for no reason uh, yeah. you know i i think that's fine um when it comes down to it uh you've mentioned this and so people will get on me if i don't ask ask the question but you you've mentioned a couple times you worked for, with a big company <laughs> last year yeah. uh can you <laughs> Can you discuss that at all? Um, well, obviously, we, we, we cannot disclose anything. The only thing I can say um, it was it, for top tier publisher. Uh -huh. um, nine months uh, was pre-production. The title didn't get into uh, full production I simply see. because they had a competing title in their portfolio. And they said this other title got more traction already. And business wise, I can totally understand the decision. Sure. It, it happens in our business uh, every now and then. Um, ironically, actually, it's better for us now. If we had continued working on that title, that would have lasted um, until 2017 or something. Mm -hmm. It would, would not have been our IP. And maybe the opportunity right. to come out with Everspace, our stuff, the way we want to do it, yeah. would have been gone. You know, in front of me, my partner Christian sits, and I'm working with him for 22 years now. And oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so many times we hit the wall, and it just turned out that because of that, we had to do something else. And then in retro perspective, always, it was always better than what we've done of course, prior. Yeah, yeah. So, and it, this is the same this time. So when they, when they pulled the plug, we're like, oh my God, they pulled the plug, this is gonna kill us. And then some, somehow we survived. We did ever space. And now we're out, we get all that positive feedback. Yeah, that's, yeah. you know, sometimes you have to go through the really bad things really bad things have to happen in your life to make it to the next great thing and that's just the case here yeah that's awesome to hear i mean i think within the gaming community that the experience the bad experiences and the good teach you but the bad ones uh, you know they suck to live through but in the yep. end many times uh, many developers end up in you know in a better position for whatever yep. reason so well that's it for me if you do you okay. have anything to add to this um I, you're I all just, talked I out <laughs> kind of talked out. No, it's um, you know what is. I think it, there was there has never been a better time to make games, because things like what we do right now talk about the game. It's it's online. People can follow. You get the feedback and everything. We have right. digital distribution. Everyone can download it, um, no matter where you are in the world, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, that's fantastic. The middleware is there. Um, you have the community you can work with closely. It's um, that's brilliant and. Um, we just love to be part of that and see so now it's like quarter to to nine i know i will keep continuing answering <laughs> email stuff for at least four more hours or so right. because it's just awesome to get all that feedback, it is, right? it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well congratulations man okay. and i really want to say thanks very much for for talking mm -hmm. to us i appreciate it i'll send you a link to the video uh, when okay. i post it okay we all will right. share it all right thanks, michael man. have all a good right. one okay take bye-bye good night bye-bye